Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a super easy way in which we can localize slash internationalize our Flutter applications. This method is going to work for any Flutter app that you're building, whether that's for the desktop, web, or mobile. So with that said, let's get into the video. Our application is going to have the ability for the user to select a language from the drop-down menu, and when they select the appropriate language, the actual text that's being displayed within the application is going to change to whatever the selected language was. So in the case of German, that's German, Chinese, it's Chinese, and if you come back to English, it's English. So let's get started. The first thing that we are going to be doing is making sure that you and I are at the same starting position. Just initialize an empty Flutter project and then you are good to go. After that is done, what you can do is actually come to the main.dart file and basically remove all of the code that's here. We are not going to be using it. Then you can create a stateful class, which I'm going to call my app. And then within our my app state, for now, I'm going to return a material app like so, and then do command save. Once this is done, I'm going to come to the pubspec.yaml file, and within the pubspec.yaml file, we're going to be adding the Flutter localization package dependency. So just copy it, come back, paste it in on the dependency section, and you're good to go. For Android, there is an additional step that we need to do, which is to come to Android app, build.gradle, and then basically set the minimum SDK version under default config to be 21. Once this is done, you can just basically close everything down and start debugging your application once Flutter Pub Get has done its magic, and hopefully the application should spin up on your device. Now that the application is running on the simulator, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is just setting up the title and theme data for my material app. And then after this, I'm going to set the, the home property for the material app to be a new widget that I'm just going to create now under a folder called pages. And I'm going to call this page home underscore page.dart. I'd just like to mention to you guys, if you're interested in the source code or any of the resources that I use in this video, links to them will be down in the description below as well as the first pinned comment. So take a look at that if you're interested in downloading the source code. I'm going to create a stateful widget here as well. I'm going to call the stateful widget home page. And then for the build function here, I'm going to return a scaffold. Once this is done, I will come back to my main.dart file. And here I'm going to set the home property to be home page like so. Once this is done, we can actually work towards initializing our Flutter localization package properly so that we can actually get it to work with our application. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that within my my app state class, I'm going to be creating a variable which is going to store a reference to the actual Flutter localization package. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line of code in because it's very simple. We just have a final variable of type Flutter localization, which is set to the Flutter localization dot instance. And after this, I'm going to override the init state function. And here I'm going to call a configure localization function like so, which we are going to be creating localization. After this function has been called within an init state, we'll just call the superclasses init state function, and I'll create the actual configure localization function here. What I'm going to be doing within configure localization is basically giving the data that our localization plugin requires in order for it to efficiently work. The first thing that we need to do is basically initialize it, and it expects us to pass a list of map locales, which is basically all of the data that it requires in order to translate from one language to another, and then the initial language code, which is the initial locale that our app is going to have when it starts up. And for this, it's going to be en, which is the language code for English. Once this is done, I'm going to set a callback function for localization on translated language to be equal to a function that I define. And I'm going to be defining it down here. And I'm going to say this function is going to be called on translated language, like so. And this is going to get a locale passed to it. And within this, we're just going to call set state and nothing else. Then I'll set this to be equal to the on translated language functions callback. And the reason we're doing this is so that every time we tell the Flutter localization package that, hey, I want to update the locale for application, then it's going to call this function, which is going to call our callback function, we'll call set state. And set state is basically going to rebuild the UI for our application. And since we are rebuilding the UI at the very topmost level, at the material app level, then everything down below that is going to be it rebuilt. And hence, our app is now going to show the text in the new language. So now that we have configured our localization plugin properly, 
and we can just reload our application to make sure that everything works and do not worry about this actual error that we're getting we can actually now focus on the actual data that our localization plugin requires in order for it to efficiently translate from one language to another so for that i'm going to go to my lib folder i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call this folder localization like so and within this i'm going to create a new file which i'm going to call locales.dart Within this, I'm going to basically define all of the data that our application is going to store within it in order to go from one language to another. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is creating a mixin, which I'm going to call local data. And this mixin is basically going to be a blueprint for all of the different data that we support in our application that can be translated from one language to another. So here I'm going to set two properties in my locale. You can add as many as you want. And for each property, the process is going to be the same. You create a static const type string. It's going to be title and you set that to be the same name as the variable. And then I'm going to do the same again. And I'm going to call this be body. And I'm going to set this to be body like so. And then for each of these, we actually define the translations for the actual um, variables that we've defined here. So the first one that I'm going to create is going to be a static const map. And I'm going to say the map is going to have keys as string and then the val values as dynamic. And then I'm going to say it's going to be equal to English is the name of this map. And the map is going to have two keys within this. The first is going to be title. And for title, I'm going to set the property to be localization like so. So in English, the title is going to be localization. And then in English, the body is going to be as follows. So let me just copy and paste it in. Like so. Let's just say for sake of conversation that the other supported locale within my application is going to be German. So for that, I'll do the same thing. I'll copy the first line of code, paste it in again. I'm going to say that this time it's going to be German. So that's DE as the language code. And then within this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have a title key and I've used Google Translate to translate from English to German. So I apologize if the translations are not correct. And then for the body, it's going to be the same thing again. And let me just copy and paste the actual body here like so and finally what I'm going to be doing is copying this once more because I also want to support Chinese as a locale within my application so like so and then uh, ZH which is the language code for Chinese and then within this I'm going to do title and the title is going to be the thing that I translated from Google like so I apologize I cannot speak Chinese and then the body is going to be this which I'm going to copy in now like so so once this is done we've defined all of the required attributes and the translations for them that are going to be supported within our application once this is done I'm going to create a list at the top which I'm going to be saying that it's going to be a list of map locales and I'm going to call this locales all uppercase and within this, I'm going to say that we are going to have a map locale and the language code for this would be English. And then the data we require for our English translations is going to be accessed from localedata.en. Then what I'm going to be doing is copying this two more times. Like so. And then here I'm going to do DE for German and then DE here. And then the same here, ZH for Chinese and then ZH here. The command save, come back to the main.dart file, go to the localizations.init function and set the map locales property to now be locales like so. Once this is done, the last thing that I'm going to be doing is just letting our material app know the supported locales as well as the localization delegate. So for that, I'm going to say that the supported locales are going to be equal to the localization.supported locales. And then the localization delegate is going to be localization dot localization delegate like so and it's going to be delegates once this is done we can actually rerun our application and make sure that everything is working as intended and we're not getting the crash that we were getting before so now we can actually go to our home page and work on it so within our home page i'm going to add a app bar to the scaffold and our app bar is basically going to be very simple so i'll just copy the code for it in it's basically going to be app bar like so it's going to have a text ch title and that's pretty much it um, and then the text is going to be empty for now so how can we get the actual 
title that's stored within our localization and display it here. So for that, what you can do is wherever you want to display a string that you are going to get from the localization package is that you're going to call local data, which is the class that we created dot title and then get string. And then we pass it the context and then dependent upon the context and the, and the current set locale, it'll automatically get the appropriate title for us. So if I do command save, since the initial language code that we've defined in English, the title that we are getting is English. If I go to main.dart and I change this to, let's just say DE and then rerun my application, this time the title we're getting is in German. So I'll change this to English to command save, reload it, and we're good to go. So now what I want to do is that within the body also display the other text. So to do that within the actual scaffold, I am going to define the body attribute and the body attribute is basically going to be a container, which is going to have a child text with some padding. So I'll just copy this in. The text for now is going to be empty. One thing that I'd like to do in this text is that I'd like to basically show the translated version of the text, but also dynamically add or embed a variable into it. So the way we do that with locales is that when we're setting up our locales data here, within whatever string that we want to embed some dynamic values into, we can add a percentage sign and then a here. So let's just say that I want to add a value here dynamically in, and it's going to say, welcome to this localized Flutter application, Hussein, let's just say, or maybe you have a user's username that you'd like to display. You do that like this. Um, and then what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be adding the same thing here as well, like so. So once this is done, you can go back to the home page and the way we display texts from the localization package in which we want to dynamically embed some values into is a bit different. What we do is that within the place where we want to display the text, we do context dot, and then we do format string, and we give it the full text, which we get from locale data. And in this case, it's going to be the body. And then for the arguments, we pass the arguments and the positions need to match accordingly with whatever the positions here are. So in the case, you have two dynamic variables here, then item number zero is going to go to the first one, item number one is going to go to the second one, so just keep that in mind. And then here, what I'm going to be doing is basically saying that I want to say Hussein as a replacement for the dynamic value that we're going to be adding. So now it says that welcome to the localized Flutter application Hussein. I'm also going to copy this actual textile and paste it in like so. And then I'm going to reload the application and make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. And now it's actually rendering the text and is dynamically adding my name to the actual body text. So now that this is done, the last thing that I want to do is add a dropdown and then having that dropdown have the ability to actually switch through the locales. So to do that, the first thing that I need to do is have access to my Flutter localization package and let it know that, hey, I want to change the locale. So for that, I'll create a variable called late Flutter localization. Then I will override the init state function. Within init state, I'm going to basically copy this line of code and paste it in, which is going to set a reference for Flutter localization to the Flutter localizations instance. And then I'm going to create a variable, which I'm going to say is going to be string. And I'm going to say that this is going to be called current locale. And I'm going to also say that this is going to be late because we're going to get the value for this later on. And then to get the current locale within the init state function, I'm going to do current locale is equals to flutter localization dot current locale dot and then language code like so. So now that we have access to the current locale, I'm going, I can print it as well. So I'm going to print it here. And if I go to the actual debug console and restart my application, you're going to see that it's prints English. So we can get to the next step. So now all I'm going to be doing is going to my app bar addings in actions item here. And this is basically going to allow me to have a drop down button. The drop down button is going to require items within it. Items is going to be a list of items which are going to be off top drop down menu item like so. And then each drop down menu item basically defines two things. It defines the value it displays and then the actual value it has. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll say that the value for this drop down 
item is going to be en, which is the language code, and then the actual value that it displays, or the child, I should say, is going to be a text, which is going to say English, like so. Then what I'll do is that I'm just going to copy these drop down menus twice. The next one is going to be DE and it's going to be called German, like so. And then here it's going to be ZH and then it's going to be called Chinese. And then for the drop down button, I also need to set the value for it, which is the current value. And I'm going to set that to be current locale. And then finally, we also need to define the on changed property. So on changed is basically going to give us a value. And this is going to be the value that we have defined here for each of the drop down menu items. And here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call a function called set locale and I'll pass the value to it like so. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is coming down to the very bottom and I'm going to be creating the function set locale. And this function is going to get an optional string passed to it, which is going to be the value. And with this function, I'm going to say that if the value is equals to null, then we do not do anything and I just return. And if that's not the case, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a series of if statements. So if the language is English or the value that gets passed to us is en, then we do flutter localization dot translate en. And then I am just going to copy and paste the additional code in, which is just some else if statements saying else if the value is de, then flutter localization dot translate de. If it's zh, then zh and you get the idea, you can do whatever other localizations that you want to support. And at the very end of this, I'm going to call set state. And within this, I'm going to set the current locale to be the value that gets passed to us like so. Once this is done, I'm going to make sure that we have no errors and I'm going to restart my application completely. So not hot reload, but restart. And now hopefully when we click on the drop down and actually change the language, it updates the language in our application to the new specified locale. And if you do this for Chinese, it does the same thing. And then I can go back to German, go to English. And that's pretty much how you do localization slash internationalization within your Flutter application. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then please don't forget to leave a like on my video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.